Hey everybody, uh, Paul Lake here with another Physics Problem Solved, where I solve physics problems from uh, some of my tutoring clients, and I solve it with lots of explanations all the way to the end. So, good thing to look at uh, if you need to see more examples of some of the physics concepts you're learning in class. Um, so here is uh, today's problem. We've got a um, a uh, a 0 0.55 kilogram ball attached to the end of a horizontal cord is revolved in a circle of radius 1.3 meters on a frictionless horizontal surface. So there's no friction here. If the cord will break when the tension in it exceeds 75 newtons, what is the maximum speed the ball can have? All right. So now the concepts you need to be familiar with in order to solve this problem are, of course, good old Newton's second law, F equals ma. And then uh, I am going to draw a free body diagram, so I hope you're familiar with that. And then, of course, this is a, a, an object moving in a circle, and so the force that makes things move in circles uh, are centripetal forces, and centripetal acceleration is an acceleration that makes things move in circles. So you're, you're going to need these concepts. So if you're unfamiliar with these, I recommend you go study those uh, first. But, um, but uh, and also... Uh, what I'd like you to do is, after reading this problem, try to solve it yourself. Pause the video, give it a shot, and then if you get stuck or you want to check your work uh, against mine, go ahead and hit play. And uh, hey, and if this is useful to you, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel if you're a physics student, um, and that'll help uh, help me out anyway. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look. Um, here's what's given. So we've got a 0.55 kilogram ball is attached to the end of a horizontal cord and is re revolving in a circle. So I'm going to draw it in kind of perspective like this. So it's a horizontal circle. And uh, here's the ball right here. And maybe it's, and then we've got some kind of string on it. Okay. And um, the radius R is 1.3. Uh, meters, and it's it's frictionless, uh, and the mass of this ball is 0 0.55 kilograms, and uh, now this is on a cord. Now the maximum force that this cord can handle is 75 newtons. If we exceed 75 uh, newtons the cord's going to break. So we're just going to say the maximum, it can be a 75 newtons. Okay. And what are we trying to find? Well, we want to find what is that maximum velocity, in other words, or speed. Really, we're talking about speed. I'll just still use the letter V for velocity. But we want the, how fast, what's the fastest this thing can go? And uh, so let's, let's uh, solve it. Okay, and I do recommend when you work a physics problem like this, draw a picture of just a little quick sketch of the problem and then write down what's given in the problem with the variables we use and then identify what it is we're trying to find. Set the problem up and that'll really help. Okay, so um, I know that um, if, if this thing is moving in a circle, that we've got a centripetal acceleration um, going on here. And um, and I and so you know we know what that equation is right for centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius. So this is our basic equation that we're going to use uh, to solve this. And check in the um, oh the the description of this video. I'll put a link to a video that a lecture I've done where this I derive where this comes from. But there's a million videos of, of that on, on YouTube. And so, um, but, so I need to get to this acceleration. And so um, to do that, I'm going to look at force. Now I'm going to draw a free body diagram of this, this ball. Okay, so here's, here's the ball. Now it's on some kind of frictionless horizontal surface. And which means that, okay, gravity is pulling this ball down, mg. And we've got a normal force, that's the frictionless horizontal surface, is 
pushing up on that with a normal force. And then we've got the string, and that provides a tension force. Now, um, there is no motion at all in the y direction here. Let me identify that. I'm going to call this the x direction and this the y direction. And, um, and I'm going to say, hey, in the y direction, the, the, the ball's moving in a horizontal circuit. So it's on this horizontal plane, y is above or below that plane, and there's no acceleration, there's no velocity uh, in, in the y direction. Um, and that means that uh, the net force in the y direction has to be zero. And so that means that this normal force has to be equal to the weight. So, and that's not really necessary to solve this problem. I just want to point that out. But here is a net force, and that's in our x direction. So I will sum the force in the x direction. That's what the net force in the dire x direction is. And that's equal to the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, well, there's only one force in the x direction, right? There is this one. So, you know, I'm just going to say, oh, okay, well, the net force in the x direction is really this tension force. And this is going to be equal to the mass. Now, the kind of uh, acceleration that we have is the acceleration that makes things go in circles. Now, if you're, if you're doing this problem, this is a pretty simple uniform circular motion problem. I want to review with you real quick um, what's going on with centripetal acceleration. So let's, let's take our view and look straight down on this, this circle. And I'm just going to draw it as a circle right here. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad, a freehand circle. And um, so let's imagine the, the ball is right here. And the tension force is like this, so that means that the acceleration is in this direction as well, all right, towards the center of that. Now, this thing has a, a speed, so that's uh, V. And, but notice that this force that causes an acceleration is going to change this velocity vector, if you want to think of this as a velocity vector. But what's it going to change? Because it's perpendicular to the um, velocity vector, it's this acceleration right here. It's not going to make this thing speed up or slow down. In other words, there's no component of this acceleration that is in the same direction as our velocity vector, that would make it speed up, or in the opposite direction of our velocity vector, that would make it slow down. There's nothing, there's no part of that. So this is only like this. And this is, um, uh, so what's gonna change, right? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. It's going to change the direction of the velocity vector. So if you look a little later, if it, things rotates around like this, if you were to look at it now, it would have the same speed. I'll try to draw it the same length. But now the um, acceleration vector has changed direction. And it's now, it's always pointed towards the center of the circle. That's where the, what the word centripetal means is towards the center of the circle, right? And so uh, center seeking, I believe. And so it's, it, it does nothing but change the direction of it. Because as the velocity vector rotates around in the circle, the acceleration vector is always perpendicular to it and is always pointed towards the center of that circle. So it only changes the direction of the velocity vector, not the magnitude, which we call the speed. The speed stays constant. The direction changes. Okay. So this is, so, so therefore, uh, this this tension force right here, or you can draw it up here, this tension force is changing the direction of the velocity vector with a centripetal acceleration. Um, and so we can say, oh, well, uh, this is a centripetal force then, and it's equal to mv squared over r. Now this is the, the speed squared. And now I'm gonna solve for this. And so I'm just going to do it in one step. 
b is equal to, well, you got multiply both sides by r. Well, we start off with the centripetal force here, which I'll just go back and forth that the, this tension force is a centripetal force. So it's the tension force times the radius. Ooh, I got to divide by the mass to get v squared all by itself. And then to get rid of v squared, I have to take the square root of both sides. So a few algebra steps in one. Um, if that bothers you, just, just do it yourself. Just do it one step at a time and you'll, you'll get here. Now I'm ready to plug in my values. Well, the maximum possible tension force is given to be 75 newtons. The radius is given to be 1.3 meters. And the mass is given to be 0 0.55 kilograms. So I get up my calculator and uh, when I do all the calculations, I get my maximum speed because this is the maximum force that I can have with it before the string breaks. And it's 13.3 or maybe 13. You want to, might want to round it off to two significant figures. Um, I think the answer that my client got from his teacher was 13.3. So we're kind of playing fast and loose here with uh, significant figures, but that's okay. 13.3 meters per second. And that is my answer. Okay. So um, let me, let's take a look at the whole thing here. And uh, hey, I hope this makes sense to you. Uh, if you have a question, leave, leave a comment. And uh, um, if you have a problem you'd like me to solve, maybe you can add that to the comments. Um, there's also links to where you can find more of these in a more organized uh, um, document. And also there's a link to how to get in touch with me if you would like uh, some physics tutoring uh, from me. So I uh, hope, hope, hope you all have a having a good time and uh, we're doing physics problems. <laughs> I know, I do. Uh, that's kind of weird. So I will see you, uh, I'll see you in the next one. May the net force be with you.